Okay, hello students. This is a tutorial to help you uh, understand how to create your 3D model of your superhero logo using a sketch of a logo. Alrighty, now first things first. <clears throat> we're going to make sure we're working in millimeters by seeing, setting our units of measurement to millimeters. That's good. And as we do this tutorial, we're going to pay attention to this folder, okay? Items, the little icon in the top left-hand corner. All right, now to begin, what we want to do first is establish how big the logo is going to be. So we're going to create a sketch, which is purely a sketch to use as reference. So I'm going to click the top of my, my top left-hand corner. I'm going to click the top of the view cube and then I'm going to create a sketch. I'm then going to find the circle tool and lining the circle tool up where the two, where the yellow and the green and the red line meet, I'm going to drag out a circle. Righto. So this circle is 31 millimeters wide, which means it's very small at the moment. I want to tap that number. I'm going to change it to 200. Okay. Then I'm going to pinch the screen and zoom out. All right, so I've drawn a circle that's 200 millimeters across or 200 millimeters in diameter. Okay, I click exit sketch. So that circle is just there to act as a reference so that I make my logo roughly that same size. Now with the circle as a reference, I'm going to add my photo. I'm going to come over here to add image. Okay, I'll do that again. Right hand, uh, left hand side, the little plus icon, add image, go to your photos and select your sketch. Righto. So right now the sketch is a little smaller than what I want it to be. So I'm going to tap this number and just change that number. So that's roughly as big as I want it to be. So 266, that looks good. I'm also going to use these arrows to make sure it's lined up as close as possible so that that green line and that red line is the center of the design, right? And if I want, I can come over to opacity and reduce the opacity so I can see a little bit better when I sketch. Okay, click done. So I've inserted my image, the sketch of my logo. Uh, I've sized it so it's roughly the same size. And what I'm going to do now is go to sketch number one in my items and delete it, All right? Because that circle was just there to act as a reference. Alrighty. Now, to be successful with Shaper and making a logo, what you want to do is draw your logo in sections. Sketch your logo in sections. My logo right now, I don't know who, what's this superhero called? Hawkman? Uh, Eagle Boy, whatever the logo is, whatever the superhero is. What I want to do is I don't want to draw the, the shield behind the bird, the bird, the inside of the shield all at once. What I want to do is just focus on one thing at once. So what I'm going to do to begin my drawing is I'm going to focus on just the bird to begin with. So again, click the top of the view cube and create a sketch. Right, I'm going to find my spline tool and I'm going to sketch using my spline tool. Alrighty. Now, if your spline tool is a little bumpy and not quite working the way you want it to work, you can click the little magnet symbol in the top left hand, top right hand corner, turn that off, and you'll have a little more control over your line. I can also click these little white dots and move the little white dots to more closely trace the line I just the line of my logo. All right, so I'm going to sketch here quickly. Move this. All right, when I sketch, I've got big overlapping sections. All right, I don't want my logo. Oops. All right, so yeah, when I sketch. I want to have big overlapping sections. 
So this is what I mean, like the tips of the wings, you want those to overlap because you want to make sure the drawing is completely enclosed at the end, which I think will make sense in just a second. So I'm tracing this as quickly as I can. If this is your for real assignment, this is your for real logo, you want to spend your time to get your drawing as neat and as close to your sketch as possible. Remember, tip, tapping on these little white dots really is a very useful way to get your spline drawing to be neat. I'm going quick as possible. to the head and also a good thing to get into a good habit to get into is like you want to zoom in and out so pinch the screen to zoom in and out so you get a little more uh, you can zoom in and see a little more detail so just a good thing to do you don't want to leave it at just the default zoom because it might be confusing okay Alrighty, very good. I've got the outside of the logo sketched. I've got to draw, put a line here for the beak. Oops, I don't like that one. I'm gonna, I'm going to delete it. I'll try again. All right, the eye. I want an expressive eye, I want a very exaggerated, angry eye. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, there's my sketch. At this stage, I'm also going to click the little, down the bottom, I've got a little scissor symbol for trim. I'm just going to trim my overlapping bits, just to clean it up a little bit. Yeah, this isn't necessary, but I find, you know, it's just helpful. All right, tap, tap, trim to clean. Whoops. Yeah, so very important that your drawing creates an enclosed shape. You know it's enclosed because when you tap on it, it becomes, it's blue inside instead of just a white, instead of just an, a line. Right, so... I've completed one element of my logo, the bird sketch. What I want to do now is extrude that by tapping certain elements and dragging it up and down. So what I'm actually going to do is begin with the, uh, I'll begin with the body actually. So I've got the body here. I'm going to extrude it by 22, click deselect all. If the sketch disappears when you extrude, just tap on your items and turn it on and off. All right, the beak, if the, if the body is 22, I'm gonna make the beak 21. So there's a little bit of a difference there. And then the eye, right? If I can't select the eye, okay? You've gotta get in the habit of turning bodies on and off to be able to select, select these little details and I'll make the eye 20 and I'll deselect all and turn my sketch back on, turn my bodies back on. All right, so these three bodies are the first three bodies of my logo, right? The E, the bird element of the logo. So that's cool. What I'm going to do while I'm here as well, is just to make it a little bit more interesting, I want like a sharp, crisp, sort of like chiseled edge on the top of this logo. So I click Tools, Chamfer, click Inside, and I'm gonna type minus one. Right, and what that does, it sort of like gives, kind of like gives the edge of the body a little sharp design. I'll tap here and here, minus one. 
Okay, and that's purely for aesthetics, right? I think that's purely just to make it look a little more interesting. All righty, now, that's good. I've completed the first part of my logo. The next part would be, so I'll come back to my sketch. The next part would be the shield behind the bird. So to do to uh, to make the shield, I'm lucky because it's a symmetrical design, so I can mirror the shield. But what I'm going to do is hide those bodies because I don't want these bodies interfering when I extrude with the shield. Okay, create a sketch. Click the line. Draw a line that comes down the center like this. I draw a line that comes down the center like this. Oh, I might turn this back on so it goes straight. So for just this little bit, I'll turn my clip to grid back on. So I know it goes directly straight down. All right, drawing half of this logo, half of this shield. Spline tool again. Spline tool again. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's what I just drew. This side of the shield. Now I want that shield to be symmetrical and to be the same on either side of that line down the middle. So I click tools. I click transform, not tools. Mirror. I click one element to begin with. Then I tap the line in the middle, then I tap everything else, uh, and I click done. Okay, so I have I have uh, copied my shield. So now I'm going to exit, move my view cube a little bit. And what I want to do is click the shield. So the other elements might be there. So I really got to pay attention to little bits like this. So I don't need that one, do I? All right, so I've selected the shield. Now, if I were to have my bodies on, this is what would happen. This is what would look. This is what it would look like. So uh, weird things would happy happen because the the first bodies that I drew would interfere with that second body. So that's kind of like what I was saying. It's very, it's much easier to hide your bodies, turn them on and off, stop them interfering with the different parts of the logo that you want to extrude. I got to click this little part of the eye here. Alrighty, so I think my eagle was uh, 20 high. So I'm going to extrude this so it's less than the eagle. So I'll go maybe 16 and click deselect. All right, and then I'll turn on everything and see what I've got. So it's starting to look like a superhero logo. What I want to do is put a border around the shield. So I'm going to turn off all the bodies except the shield. I'm going to click the top of my design here sketch and I'm going to find this tool where is it offset edge sometimes you might have to click a little thing here called more and then find offset edge and I want to click on loop and then I can drag in and create a border like this okay I've got my border and then I drag that back into the shield and click deselect all and that's what I've created. I'll turn my bodies back on. All right, fantastic. So I've created my superhero logo design. Actually, one last thing. Again, tools, chamfer. I'm going to click the top of the shield border here. If I drag in this direction, I'm 
maybe I won't do that. Anyway, you can champ for the top and see what that looks like. I don't know why I wasn't working just at that point, but who cares? All right, there we go. There's there's the first. That's how I make a 3D model of a logo. Uh, in the next video, I'll explain how to apply colors and make a rendered image of the logo.